So uh, Belinda, why don't you go ahead and roll that tape? to go, so I think we should let them live. Um, and also, these trees are special to Valmar because, uh, because they are trademarks um, to, um, to our neighborhood, so I think we should let them live even more. Write to the electric company and tell them you're unhappy. Salia, write and tell them trees will provide homes for animals. Asa, cut the branches that are in the way. Rosa, have a protest. Ava, move wires instead of trees. Cal, use power from another company. I think ask the workers to stop. Ethan, plant new trees. Lucy, tell PTV we need oxygen from trees. Kayla, make wires higher. Dear Mr. Darby, I've learned that your company is planning to cut down many Canary Island date palm trees in Pacifica's Valmar neighborhood. I know that these trees are an issue because they're so close to a power line. However, as a Valmar resident, I believe this will disturb the, inhabitant, the inhabitants of the trees, harm natural beauty, and may decrease nearby property values. Instead of cutting down the trees, we should move power lines because they aren't actual living organisms. That is why I believe we should not cut down Valmar's palm trees. These trees are home to some native species that will be disturbed by your company cutting them down. One creature that will be harmed is the western screech owl, which lives and nests within the palm trees. The owl helps balance out surrounding environment by keeping rat populations low. By cutting the palm trees down, your company will negatively affect the owls and their, surrounding it sur and their natural surroundings, which include us as neighbors. These trees are, are also increased natural beauty in the surrounding area. If your company decides to replace the trees, it will cost around $20,000 to replace each one. I hope you've considered all of the reasons above. These palms are very important to much of the neighborhood because of the animals that live in them, the natural beauty created by the palms, and the money it will, cross, it will cost to replace them. Please reconsider your decision on cutting the, these wonderful trees down. Sincerely, Ellis Manning Guar. <laughs> All right, now those are some cute kids, <laughs> I gotta say. Um, although I'm not sure if we should have 10-year-olds dictating our, uh, our utility policies. Sure. <laughs> but uh, I do look forward to uh, voting for Ellis Manning Villar for uh, the city council <laughs> about 20, uh, 30 years from now. <laughs> yeah, or maybe less. Yeah. Yeah, um, so uh, th that was one of the events that we did. Um, mm -hmm. I noticed you captured some video of the uh, the signs we had on the palm trees. That was something mm -hmm. that uh, Nancy Hall and the Valmar Conservators did. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also a member of the Valmar Conservators, and so uh -huh. um, one of the things that the Conservators has done is uh, pledged uh, a third of the money that we have, or is it? No, I'm sorry, two thirds of the money. So, we're, um, uh, and. And I think uh, by doing that, uh, by raising money through the Palm Sunday event, uh, the kids also put together a book drive. Um, ah, so part so of they made some money that day. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, the uh, Kids for Change have raised something like seventeen hundred dollars. Uh, Belmar Conservators wow. have raised about, uh, I, I want to say like about seven, eight thousand. I'm not sure exact what the exact count is, but we're close to about ten thousand dollars that we've raised so far, as a community. So. In, in a matter of uh, you know less than two months, so I, I you know I'd say that. Uh, so you're not just talking; you're making money. So we have real money you're that uh, we're, we're, yeah. we're bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, uh, I don't really think that uh, we need to. We, meaning the, the citizens of Pacifica, the residents of Alamar, um, should be responsible for paying uh, the entire bill. And what I mean by that is, uh, the trees were there first. The trees were, were over 100 years old. Uh, PG&E uh, in in their um, you know. Um, Finite wisdom. <laughs> well, uh, you know, they, they could have been better about it, but probably mm -hmm. people weren't thinking 100 or, you know, I don't know if it was 60 or 80 years ago. Whenever the power lines went in, um, they probably weren't thinking, oh, these trees are going to be really tall one day. Well, they, were, they were thinking that they will retire. Those, whoever made that decision will be retired by the time it's a problem. Yeah. 
So well, now some other people have to deal with it. Or the lines will be underground. Surely the lines will be underground. It's well, if there's any community <laughs> that needs underground wires, it's that one. That's, because well, there's no so I would anywhere you put the wires, you're going to have some kind of a tree issue. That's eventually. true. It's full of trees there. That's true. Well, we used to have more trees. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, as you probably know, um, the the pines and the cypress they have a an age limit. Yeah, uh, and about so, so 80, those, 90 years, and they right. And they so die. those are those are all. Uh, so we've lost almost all the old pine and mm -hmm. cypress trees, uh, and it would be a shame to lose uh, the healthy trees that still have life in them. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've gone to PG&E and said, hey, can can we move these lines? And, and for the for the longest time. Um, they were stalling, saying that uh, we'll, we'll move them, but you need to pay three thousand dollars up front for an engineering study. Um, recently, I think there was a, you know a change in people, and, and the, the new folks have been uh, very cooperative. And they said, well, we can't give you a detailed study, but here's a ballpark estimate. Um, and it, it came in pretty high. It was in like forty-two, forty-three thousand um, dollars to move the poles. To move uh, just three or four poles to save the most at-risk trees. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so then, uh, but, but PG&E wouldn't pay any of that. No, they, you they, have to pay they, all of that. They, they told us that uh, there is a uh, uh, rule. I, I can't remember if it's Rule 50. There's some C PUC, P uh, Public Utilities Commission regulation, that uh, forbids them uh, from using ratepayer funds to relocate power lines for this sort of purpose. Um, it turns out that the rule was put in by the utility companies themselves. Just <laughs> to neglect to mention that. Um, uh, furthermore, I, well, so I, I went and said, well, well, then why don't you use uh, shareholder funds? Don't use ratepayer funds, use shareholder funds. I mean, they're, they're using a lot of shareholder funds right now to make sure that you and I have, as taxpayers, uh, of the right to vote. So uh, I'm making a joke <laughs> <folks> about uh, <laughs> Proposition 16. They call it the Right to Vote Act or it's something? It's the or? Taxpayer's Right to Vote Act. Yeah, um, right. And, uh, and, and that's actually, uh, uh, you know, I think an interesting uh, philosophical point, which is that uh, the whole point of that proposition is to create a two-thirds requirement before a city municipality can become a, what's called a community choice aggregator or a municipal utility district. In other words, um, PG&E is spending millions of dollars to make it very difficult for anybody to get into the power business. But if we, this, you know, the um, residents of Pacifica, are putting our funds to relocate power lines, to maintain power lines, that sounds like us getting in the power business. <laughs> so it sounds to me like... Okay, they're playing both sides of that in yeah, your Yeah, it view. sounds to me like they're more than happy to let us pay the tab when uh, it doesn't suit them. Well, they probably figure that that, that money, that $30 million they're spending on Prop 16 is is helping their shareholders if it passes because well, actually, it would cause them to make more money, right? It, so they it's can absolutely spend true. Yeah. Shareholder, but but perhaps as a PR move, they could spend some money to to um, to do the right thing once in a while, and that might also well, make. Their well, that was kind of uh, the argument that I was making, saying that if, uh, you wouldn't have to spend so much money on Prop 16 if you just work with us. We're not going <laughs> to want to leave you guys. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, but um, but yeah, the. Uh, Despite all the advertising and rhetoric, I mean, Prop 16 really is about um, sort of limiting anybody from defecting from PG&E. Well, know. and it's what I don't like about it is that the two-thirds part about it. Because that's what I mean. It lost to me. Again. That's not uh, democracy. That's that's giving a minority of the population the ability to block something that the majority wants. That's right. We have that in Measure N. We experienced that here. It was almost impossible. We miraculously got exactly two-thirds of the people to vote for Measure N. I doubt we would be able to pull that off again, you know? yeah. um, and we, we've learned how difficult that is. So that, that's the thing that, that, that gets me from being a fence sitter on that issue to being strongly against that. Yeah, I, th I think that uh, unless you um, have a strong vested interest in PG&E's profits, you know, <laughs> like you're a major shareholder, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't imagine why anybody would vote for it.